Hey everyone, welcome back to Avamax Flying Titan Tuesdays. My name is Brady Lair, and today we're going to tie a nice Mayfly Cripple Challenge Fly. This will be a Calabatus version, so a nice big version today. Tying on a new hook from Uncle Feather Merchants. This is the uh, XT040, the JB Emerger, John Bar Emerger. So it's got a nice big gape with a lot of curvature and then that slight up eye up front. And we're tying with our Vivas thread. This is a 14 aught and done today. I'm gonna work right on down this hook shank. I'm gonna utilize the majority of this bend for some curvature and give that illusion of the emerging insect, maybe stuck in the, the surface film. Start with the tailing and this is gonna be some whiting tailing. This is the golden badger color, which will be somewhat of a trend in what we're tying with today. So we'll grab a bundle of these right on off, trying to keep our tips aligned in doing so. So that's a nice cream color. We'll go ahead and measure out that length and we can transfer that and tie it in place right on the back of this pattern. And then we'll walk on forward and I'm gonna go ahead and use the rest of that material so that I have a nice consistent taper to lay our biots on, which will be our body material here. Walk on up to where I want that. And so in consideration, it's a little bit past the halfway point because we're gonna do a bit of work up front. And tie that into place and then walk back down and secure our biots. The biots I've been soaking in just a little bit of warm water. This makes them nice and supple to tie in. Definitely worth a little bit of extra effort. Don't have to soak them for too long. Five, 10 minutes or so and they'll be nice and ready to tie with. Can just be a really brittle material if you don't do that ahead of time. So avoid breaking them and go ahead and get them ready and soak them there for a little while. So I'll secure that right in the back and then walk my done thread straight on up to where I left off there. And then we can half hitch a couple of times to keep our thread locked in place and wrap our bio forward. I use my hackle pliers for this function, these stone foam plunger hackle pliers that I like. And we can pull those right on up and wrap it forward. And just barely touching wraps, using that translucent aspect of this biot to give you some segmentation as you go. And you can see it flares out a little bit for you too. Almost like it is the shuck just breaking free from that nymphal version of the Calabatus as it's transitioning into its dry fly adult stage. So once we have that wrapped on forward, nice and snug, we can capture it with our thread that's waiting for us. And keeping nice and tight there. And then we can clip out that excess biot. From there, I'm gonna add just a little bit of a darker aspect to this pattern. And it's gonna be some beaver dubbing, just the natural color beaver dubbing. It's a nice picky option to use, kind of adds movement and whatnot to the pattern. As if it's trying to break free. That surface tension for a lot of bugs can be a really hard point in their emergence and creates a great opportunity for trout to attack an easy meal. When that's going on, Calabatus tend to have a long period of time where they're sort of 
stuck there trying to get through. So we'll make a nice dubbing noodle out of that and build ourselves just a quick dubbing ball right here where our wing prop will end up, where our elk hair wing will end. This will act as a prop for that material. You can clip out some of those longer unruly guys, but being nice and picky is the idea. We'll come back with some bleached elk hair now. And I'm gonna go ahead and select a small hank. You don't need too much for this pattern. But we'll get it nice and cleaned off. Get all that under fur out of there. And then stack it nicely to get our tips aligned. And I like using an aluminum hair stacker just because it's pretty static free. Don't have to fight it too much. Get them down in there. Stack it a little bit. I'll probably trim them down and stack this a couple times. And instead of tying this in with the tips facing rearward, we're actually gonna flip it around in our hands and the tips are gonna be tied in facing forwards on this pattern. That kind of lends itself to being that cripple. This will kind of keep the top side of the fly riding upward in the film while the rest of the bug can kind of slip right below the surface there. And we'll measure that out. I want them to stick out just a little ways past that hook eye, maybe two or three hook eyes forward. And we'll do a couple of loose wraps. I want to hold this material all straight up. I don't want it to curve around the hook shank, so I'm going to pull it down and then work my way right on up to the hook eye and do the same. Pull it down, get them to flare out, but keep them right on top of that hook shank. And then we'll work on back where that dubbing ball is. Use that as a prop for the rear section. And then we can clip out this excess material, sort of like on a elk hair, and let them flare on up. From there, I'm gonna kinda of clean this up just slightly, bunch this down, try and keep it from moving around on me. And then we'll add our last material, which is gonna be the hackle. And same thing, this is a golden badger hackle that I have. And I'm gonna use that, kind of measure out. I don't wanna go too big on this. It doesn't need to be the whole hook gape because this is such a, a wide gaped fly. The more you tie, the more you'll kind of get a feel for how you want, how long you want this to be. But we'll prep it just the same as we would any dry fly hackle. Clear off our bar bowls. And then we can X-wrap this in place, so one from front to back, back to front. Slipped on me a little bit, let's try that again. Front to back, back to front, so it's nice and 90 degrees off of the hook shank. And then we can capture that stem and bring it forward just to secure that in place off that little excess bit there and then move our thread on up so we can do the same with the hackle go ahead and half hitch it I want to trap that elk hair and then we can palmer our golden badger hackle so I'm just gonna wrap it on forward we'll do one touching wrap right on the rear and then some touching wraps forward. This golden badger gives a nice dark underbase with the light hackle coming off. 
just a really nice coloration. And once we get to where our thread's waiting for us, we'll capture that in place. And then I'm gonna sneak right underneath that elk hair and clip off that excess. From there, all I need to do is give it a nice little whip finish. It can be kind of tricky to do underneath this pattern. I'm gonna pull that elk hair back, maybe push on it a little bit with my thumb there. Make the hook in place better. And then using this Tiemco midge whip finish really helps allow me to kind of sneak underneath and get a few turns of whip finish behind the eye. Also helps to prop that elk wing up. Just like so. Really cool little bug. Something you can play around with with many different size variations. Whether it be a blue, blue wing olive, cripple emerger that you're doing, uh, you know, a wide range of mayflies your March Browns, your Hedricksons, all that good stuff, as well as a nice big juicy calabatus for your lake still water fishing.